This is the Bell & Hell DV1100HDZ camcorder. I previously reviewed three other Bell & Hell camcorders and no, they're not paying me to do these videos, but I happen to notice that of this model, there are no test videos at all of it on YouTube. So I figured I might as well do my own video about it and see how good it is. So this is their full high definition widescreen digital video camcorder with 10 times optical zoom, a three inch touchscreen LCD, records in 1080p, has a bunch of features here including motion detection and a built in LED light, has a 37 millimeter lens thread on it, slow motion feature, they're the things it comes with. And here is the camcorder itself. One unusual thing, just like the 2300 HDZ, is that it uses a lens cap, which you don't see much anymore. But aside from that, it's a pretty nice looking camcorder. It has a nice glossy finish, which attracts fingerprints, but otherwise looks nice. And has all your typical controls. I like this large recording button. It's very easy to find with your finger and a rather nice soft padded hand strap. And there you can see the lens. It's a rather large lens for this type of camcorder. And underneath it is the microphone, and that's the big letdown. The audio quality is really quite bad on this model. It's only mono, and it's rather tinny, and it has a kind of noise reduction effect, similar to what you get when using the built-in microphone in a laptop. It's some kind of filter which cancels out background noise which also cancels out some of the sound you want to record. And when confronted with a loud environment such as riding in a car, the audio gets so broken up that you can't even understand it, as you'll hear in some of my test clips. But on the other hand, this built-in LED light is very powerful and it casts a very wide beam so it's, it, that was a big surprise to me, this light, how good it is. And this camcorder is actually pretty good in low light. It's rather grainy, but it does have a very good sensitivity in low light. And when we open up the LCD, you should hear a familiar sound. <laughs> yes, they use the Windows ding sound as the startup sound. And inside here, we can see a couple buttons including a recording pause button down here, which is a very nice feature you don't see on a lot of camcorders. I think Samsung is pretty much the only one using that feature. And here's the button to turn on the LED light, but it also has a feature called digital light, which just electronically boosts the gain, and it manages to do so without slowing down the shutter speed, which is pretty good. So. It tends to make the image very grainy, but it does actually make the image quite a bit brighter. And then the second step turns on that LED light. And here's the touch screen. I won't go through all the controls here, but I'll just give you a brief overview of it. There's different resolutions, 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720p at 60 frames per second, 720p at 30 frames per second, or VGA 640x480. You get various controls like white balance, there's the motion detection, slow motion. There's actually three pages of menus here, so to get to the next page you have to swipe it. And then there's the settings for the still photo mode, and then the setup options for the camcorder, setting it to NTSC or PAL, and turning the beeps on and off, and formatting the SD card and things like that. So the touchscreen is pretty nice. And there's your 10 times optical zoom with autofocus. And behind this door here is the HDMI output and the USB connection. It does not have a standard composite AV output. And it also does not have a DC input for charging, so you can only charge through USB. That's pretty typical for a lot of entry-level camcorders these days. On the bottom is a tripod mount with the locator pin, and under this door is the rechargeable battery that it comes with, which is a CB170, 3.7 volts at 1700 milliamp hours, and then there's the SD card slot. Inside the box is a very brief owner's manual, which is more like a pamphlet of the basic controls and operation of the camcorder. Then we get a CD with ArcSoft Media Impression software. 
and a warranty card, a one year warranty. And in addition to the lens cap, which I had to put on because it did not come with that pre-assembled, it comes with a carrying bag, which is kind of cheap. And then the USB charger that plugs into an AC outlet. You can also recharge this through your computer, although it will take longer. And on this side, we get an HDMI cable, which is a nice touch, and a USB cable. The DV1100HDZ records the same kind of AVI files like the DNV900HD uses, which do not work with a Macintosh. VLC Media Player will play them, but QuickTime will not, and I couldn't get them to work with either iMovie HD or iMovie 11. So basically, if you're a Mac user, you'll probably have quite a bit of difficulty getting the AVI files that this records to work. And just like the other Bell & Howell camcorders, the DV1100HDZ was not designed by them. If you go on eBay, you can also find it sold as the Rich HDA220. And as the HDVZ35 with no brand name on it. And there's another one here with no brand name or model number. And here's one by a brand name you should recognize, Hewlett Packard. The T450 camcorder. This one is a little bit different because it has built-in Wi-Fi, but otherwise it's the same thing. And the one review video of this model that I saw on YouTube, the person commented that it also has very bad sound quality. So that's a common problem with all of these camcorders based on this same design. So that's about it for a brief overview of the features and controls of the Bell & Howell DV1100 HDZ camcorder. So now I'll give you some test footage. First I'll give you the one good thing about this camcorder which is the low light sensitivity and the built in LED light. This is 720p 30 frames per second mode. This is the same scene and lighting level that I've used to test several other camcorders recently. So you can compare it to brand name camcorders like Sony and Panasonic. So first we can turn on the digital light feature which definitely makes it a little bit brighter and actually doesn't seem to make it much more grainy, at least on the LCD. So here's a more close-up shot. First is the so-called digital light, and then I push it again and turns on the LED light, which you can see is very good. There is normal mode, digital light mode, and the built-in LED light. Here's a test in an even darker location. First is the digital light, which just makes it much more grainy. And then we turn on the LED light, which lights up all those bottles just fine. And here's another scene of some CD racks on the wall here. The digital light just makes it a lot more grainy. It brings up some of the detail, but it's so grainy that it doesn't really help that much. But then we turn on the LED light and you can see everything on there perfectly clear. So this is definitely the best feature of this camcorder. And here's a music test. If your heart has been torn like that, and you're trying to put the pieces back together in a relationship that's fallen apart multiple times, time and time again, you just keep getting your heart broken. Let me tell you something about doing that. Don't do that. And in bright lighting, this is the 720p 60 frames per second mode, which I found that the autofocus works quite a bit faster in the 60 frames per second mode than it does in the 30 frames per second mode. So while the 30 mode has better low light sensitivity, once you get into good lighting, you really should use the 60 frames per second mode, which the autofocus still tends to hunt, but at least it 
doesn't take as long to try to figure things out. So in good lighting, it's best to use the 720p 60 frames per second mode. That way the autofocus works faster. This camcorder does have a dedicated macro mode in the menu, but I can't see any difference of it either turned on or off because even with it turned off right now, I can still get focus on very close up objects. So it doesn't seem to make any difference. And also with macro mode turned on, it can still focus on more distant objects. So this is 720p 60 frames per second mode, testing close-up focus, and it does a pretty good job. Let's just see how close I can get. That's less than two inches away from the lens, so it looks like the close-up focus is pretty good on this camcorder. However, there is no image stabilization, so if you want to try zooming, once you get zoomed in, things get a bit shaky. This is at the full 10 times optical zoom right now. So it's nice that it has optical zoom, but it would have been even better if they had given it some kind of image stabilization to help when you're fully zoomed in. Now I'm going to test out the recording pause feature. So I'll hit the pause button. And now I'm recording again in the same file. So it's a very nice feature to have. And I just hit pause again and it picked up recording in the same file, which is a very nice feature to have if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to edit videos and just likes to do everything in one take. This way, if you need to reposition the camera or you need two hands to do something, you can just hit pause and put the camera down and then pick up recording again without creating a new file. So then you'll just have one file to upload which definitely makes things quite a bit easier. So the recording pause feature is a very nice thing to have, but you probably want to have it on a much better camcorder than this. I know Samsung has it on a bunch of their HD camcorders. I don't know if any of the other brands are using it. I know definitely Sony and Panasonic don't have it on their entry-level HD camcorders. And this is going to be a comparison of field of view between the 720p and the 1080p modes. Right now this is 720p 60 frames per second. And with the camcorder in the same exact position, this is 1080p mode, which you can see has a more narrow field of view, as typical for camcorders based on the Amarella chip. And this is 640 by 480 VGA mode, which seems to have the same horizontal width as the 1080p mode, but adds more to the top and bottom. Now back to 720p mode, which has the same height as the VGA mode, but adds more to the sides. So 720p clearly has the widest field of view on this camcorder. Driving footage, 720p, 60 frames per second on the no Hell camcorder. Not sure how good it's going to turn out because there's no image stabilization. So it's probably going to be rather shaky. Here's some outdoor footage with some wind. So I don't know if, how good the, the wind reduction is on this camera if it even needs it with such a bad microphone. There's some birds chirping, but I don't know if you'll be even able to hear that 